So, <laughs> amongst many freelancing uh, jobs I did, there were some kind of uh, milestones in my life. I started in Frontline Studios when I was 17 and st still in high school. I was a 3D developer, uh, 3D artist then. Next I moved to uh, visual uh, graphics and I worked m amongst many with uh, Darwin uh, Film Group. And finally I settled in huge games when I focused on various technicalities of working with uh, Unity. And I worked there uh, mostly in mobile game industry, so most of the things I'll show you will regard mobile games. But they will still apply to other platforms, not just not as strongly as to the mobile games. Uh, beside that, I also develop my own games. If you will uh, check out my uh, Twitter, at HetiDev, you can uh, see them, and also I post various tools and tips regarding UI. So what we will learn? Mm. Generally, I'll be talking about creating this optimal UI with our fellow artists. Uh, I will show you some tips and tricks that uh, came from uh, various case studies in the projects I worked on. And we'll gradually dive deeper into the technicalities and optimizing an existing project. Because of that, I have some graphics showing what mistakes were released on production and some uh, very <coughs> simple graphics that are just for illustrating the purpose. So please be advised, there will be bugs there. So without further ado, the first part dealing with UI. We need to remember that our job, our work intertwines. I give uh, artists uh, information what I need, they give me graphics, I tell them what to fix, what I need to be changed, and this process goes on and on. But what if we can fix that? Like imagine a world where you get from your artist the production uh, or implementation ready graphics. and. To achieve that, I believe that we both need to understand uh, how we work and especially how, what kind of limitations Unity puts on us. So by all means, if you are a developer, please do a similar presentation to your artists. Show them how you work, what you deal with, show them how layouting in Unity works and even some things I'll show you today. So we'll start with a warm-up. Uh, the most basic things we think we use in UI is line slicing. So we don't need big graphics if we want a pop-up uh, that's especially prominent for uh, graphics that have plain backgrounds. So uh, if we need a big button, we don't need the whole graphic, we just need the frame and we can create various shapes and sh sizes. We can also take the advantage of how mm, Unity filtering works, like take a look at this pixel that is put, just a single pixel creates a very nice gradient on the side of each pop-up. So, that's the benefit, another benefit of using line slices is that they allow us for making uh, adaptive design that works on many resolutions, which is most mostly important in mobile gaming. Next, how about uh, gradients? When you cr uh, need uh, a gradient in your game, don't give your developer a whole strip of gradient. Supri surprise them with only two pixels. That's taking advantage of filtering. And what's the benefit of it? No matter to what size you will 
uh, enlarge this two pixel graphic after fi uh, filtering it will have a perfect gradient and contrary to the like this exemplary 80 pixel gradient you will avoid banding because if you will compress this gradient on the right you will get banding effect but filtering as friendly as it may be it also can bite our bugs especially especially near the edges so i usually uh, just to tell my graphic uh, the graphic artists I work with to uh, leave a one empty uh, space around graphics. Uh, you can see that uh, on the left, the near the edge, when Unity calculates how to enlarge a graphic and filter it, it will create a very sharp, crisp stop if the graphic is touching the edge. But on the right, you can see the circle that has this one empty space, and you can see that the filtering smooths it out. So this is like very minuscule thing to notice, right? Shouldn't matter in the production or anywhere. Wrong. It may especially be harmful when you are using uh, six slices and uh, here you can see that uh, once I received a graphic uh, that uh, I was told it, would, uh, it had one pixel of empty space around but turned out it was just uh, some kind of uh, reminder of shadow or glow that was mm, near the edge and you can see at top and the bottom there is this like weird shadow going on. That's because uh, empty means that alpha component is zero, not that you cannot see it. And this can leave that kind of artifacts. I also advise my, uh, the graphic artists to mind the size. And if they, for instance, supply us with a 100 pixels by 100 pixels graphic that we use to create well, some rounded rectangle, let's say, and suddenly they change the resolution to 120 to 120. It may affect the graphic. Take a look, I will jump back and forth. It changes slightly. Why is that so? Because uh, when we do nine slicing, we should remember that uh, the borders we put there are absolute. So we say, do not uh, scale whatever is 40 pixels from the border. But take a look. In the graphic that is 100 by 100, 40 pixels from the edge, it's basically near the center. But 40 pixels on a bigger graphic makes, uh, makes it like one third of the circle. And this would be very prominent if you would receive a 300 by 300 graphic instead, because you would only get, uh, you would notice a significant change to this rectangle. And those small changes are the most dangerous, because you cannot easily spot them. So you can say that big mistakes are easy to spot. But the small mistakes are spotted by the users because they can go to production unnoticed. For instance, uh, we had a set of buttons in our game and uh, we shipped it like this. The um, graphic on the left is slightly bigger, but it uh, went unnoticed because it didn't raise any you know, suspicions. It looked decent enough, so everyone thought that's how it's supposed to be. And we fixed it because it was inconsistent with the design. But uh, what's most interesting is the reason why this single pictogram was bigger than the others. Uh, it was based on the prefab, prefab and the des designer 
change the aspect ratio of the uh, graphic. So when uh, we assumed all every single pictogram to be squared, this one was uh, rectangular and uh, layouting that we applied made it uh, enlarge. And that's what happened. So conclusion here is that developers re rely on artists' consistency and we should all communicate with each other. Like I said, we should understand, uh, artists should understand how we uh, utilize their assets. So a change in aspect ratio or size may affect uh, the project and cause some problem to the developers. Another aspect of uh, working uh, with size is the magic of power of two. Like here, you can see a logo that I received and it was 500 by 514 pixels and it weighed one megabyte. I kindly asked to uh, make it uh, square because it was a vector graphic, it shouldn't be that uh, that hard. And after resizing it, I was able to apply a better compression and it weighted only 64 kilobytes. That's really good because it reduces the size of the build. And is in this case, quite significantly. The same applies to the background. You can utilize the power of two and crunch compression to make to ship bigger graphics and reduce the the size they occupy on the disk. Like here, we had uh, we background 1,200 1, by uh, 1,920 pixels. It weighed almost seven megabytes, and I suggested to change it to to four 2K basically and it reduced the size significantly and we were able to cover even more uh, variety of devices. So just a reminder that when you import a texture in Unity, there's this uh, button, use crunch compression, and even if you only slightly reduce the quality of your graphic, like set it to 94, you will see Mm, significant reduction to the size of the graphic and you will not be able to notice basically with your naked eye any differences. Another rule uh, about nine slices, we can build them. If uh, from the graphics I received, uh, I was told that we need some of them to have this triangular place for a badge and uh, when I changed the graphic well it looked weird and not nice so the solution was to simply ask the graphical artist to not put them together in a single file but just split those elements to the triangle and I already had the background so I just adjusted the prefab and I was still able to use my uh, scalable and adjustable uh, background for um, pop-ups and buttons. And finally, rule number one, the most important. We do not have blending modes, so please do not design stuff that we cannot make. But how can we work around that? We still have color tint. We can, if we have a black-white graphic, we can uh, change the color of it. And we have alpha, alpha multiplication. So we can adjust the transparency of the graphic. With those, uh, with two simple graphics, we can easily uh, replicate anything we want that has shadows, highlights, and so on. And in this example, I received three mm, graphics for uh, gold, bronze, and silver medals, and my inner optimization instinct kicked in, and I said, no, we can make it with only two graphics. So 
I uh, taught the fellow artists how to separate highlights into a separate layer, and we got it working uh, easily like that. And it was a good decision because of re reusability. We ended up using this uh, graphic in more places uh, and with more color varieties. But it also has other, other benefits. Uh, when you move uh, color management to Unity, you can uh, adjust and tweak the colors inside Unity with your graphic designer. You can have color themes mm, in your game. You reduce uh, build size again because you will most probably end up with less graphics than uh, you started with. And it's easier for your artist because when they, let's say, we would want to change uh, how the frame around this metal looks like, they change it in one graphic and it updates everywhere. So the graphics stay consistent. So the, this rule of thumb here is that if the, you can make it using normal layers, alpha channel and color tint, we can basically uh, reproduce it in vanilla Unity. Of course, like I uh, put a small mark there, there are shaders, we can create other blending modes, but in the mobile development, uh, it would uh, affect the performance. So if we can make something using the, uh, this basic stuff, it will usually be more, uh, it will be optim more optimal than you writing a shader. Rule number, number seven, we cannot simply rotate things because that's how Unity works. So don't be surprised when a developer will ask you to just rotate the arrow so you can use it. It's the same graphic, but we need it rotated 90 degrees. Uh, masking in Unity is other issue because it comes in limited options. First is the rectangle, the most efficient one, and uh, but it's nothing fancy. We can use uh, graphics with alpha channel to, uh, to shape the mask, but as you can see, it cannot create a ma gradient in the mask. You would still end up with a cutout, and what's worse, it doesn't always work with every single device. But there's a fancy method. What you can do, you can cheat. If you want a gradient in your mm, masked, for instance, text, you only need to put the background colored gradient in front of the masked text. And here you can see uh, that it looks like the text is masked uh, with gradient, but it's just a trick. The more uh, problematic issue is always text placement. Just as a reminder, we have uh, two types of text adjusting in Unity. We can set the font size to a fixed size, or we can make it adaptive. It's best illustrated with a preview, just that's how the text would behave, uh, fixed on the top and uh, adjustable at the bottom. I once received uh, a design of uh, a window. It was, uh, the area of the pop-up was changing because different windows were, were displayed uh, above and below it. The numbers change uh, and the text uh, would also change because of translations. So I immediately noticed that this design may pose a problem. So I decided to implement it differently. And so uh, came the product owner, Hurdur, why you changed the design? Well, I explained with a simple fix. It won't work as designed, especially after translating this new to like mm, Nove or some other longer uh, word. It would just 
um, cause problems. Uh, to place it, to always place it in a way it doesn't obstruct uh, some other graphic or text. Of course, uh, I could have made it work. I could have spent a few hours trying to uh, calculate the size of the text, change the uh, horizontal group setting to compensate for this text, but it would consume time. And sometimes it's just better to consult with the designer, with the artist, and uh, think about what will be faster, just adjusting the design or trying to put into work with whatever limitations Unity puts on us. And still, the mistakes were, were, were made because when the text were, was translated, it still uh, went outside the pop-up. So we just changed the uh, design and resigned from this new keyword. And as a summary, try not to design texts that compete for the same space. I don't say that everything should be like uh, rows and columns. Just try to avoid uh, what I'm showing on the right because, and keep in mind that text after translation can change its length. And finally, the second part, let me take a sip of water. I remind, uh, remind you once again that it mostly regards mobile games. That's where uh, the, performance, the performance is toughest and smallest changes uh, make big differences. But it will still apply into consoles or standalone development. First, <clears throat> let's clarify uh, certain dependency. Because when I will be talking about uh, optimization, I will mostly mean minimizing the frame time. And what is frame time? Uh, it's just this relationship. If you are able to produce a new frame every 17 milliseconds, that means that in one second, that is 1,000 milliseconds, you can render 60 frames. Therefore, you have frame rate of 60 FPS, because 17 times 60 is roughly 1,000, which consists of a second. So when you have, mm, when you calculated your frame time in a given view, uh, when will UI optimization be worth the effort? only when the project is GPU heavy. And what does that, does that mean? Uh, to simplify it, if you have a scene in uh, like many, no code is running, nothing fancy is going on, user just scrolls the views and you notice that it's jaggy and you have drops in FPS there, that means the sole reason for this poor performance is your UI and stuff that is going on on the GPU. So that's uh, when you can apply uh, UI optimization. You should also keep in mind um, that this dependency I showed you is not linear. Take a look at this graph. We'll stay with it for a few slides and uh, observe that uh, when you have very poor frame rate, like 10 FPS, you spend a lot of time rendering each of your frames, like 100 milliseconds. When you have higher uh, frame rate, like 60, 60 FPS, you spend a very small amount of time rendering each frame, about 17 milliseconds. That means that, mm, of course, depending on the samples, sample size, you will observe higher fluctuations of measured FPS when you have a high performance, and the FPS will seem more stable when you have a poor performance. And that's because it, uh, a small change in uh, this frame time when you have small, uh, poor performance doesn't take much, but if you have high performance, even a slightest change to the frame time can result in a boost in FPS. So to put it into a perspective, imagine you found a fix or uh, optim optimization that can 
uh, reduce frame time by 10 milliseconds. If you have poor performance, well, it won't matter much because it will gain like one FPS. But if you have a game running at 30 FPS, you can gain uh, about 23 FPS. So it's a huge boost. So it will definitely be worth it. And it is up to you where exactly you want to uh, draw those lines. But basically, if the performance of the game is poor, there's go big or go home. Only most, most powerful optimization will work there. And at this point, it's basically fixing your project to run smoothly. And when you have this 30 FPS, it's re very easy to boost it and have high gains. But is it? If you have already have a high frame rate, that means there will be not much space to optimize it. But if you will manage to find uh, something to optimize, you will make your game very highly performant. And remember, it's very important because it's the user experience. The smoother it runs, the more pleasant experience for the player. The player. <coughs> now I want to show you uh, the results of the optimization review uh, I did. And just by reducing a few draw calls using uh, the tips I will show you in my presentation and some stuff that I showed you before, uh, we were in this uh, yellow, reddish zone that uh, either underperformed or was uh, around 30 FPS. And it was very easy to make this game run, hit the 60 FPS cap just by reducing the few draw calls. So now, uh, how can we do it? Uh, with my favorite tool. If I would ask you what is the number one tool that we can use to solve all our graphical optimization problems, you would probably say that it's the profiler. No, it's the most underestimated tool in Unity. It's called Frame Debugger because it shows you what your GPU is rendering to produce a given frame. Like draw call by a draw call. Here you can uh, see a, a UI from our game that I inspected to check if it's uh, performing optimally. And you can notice that in frame 3 uh, we can see all the buttons appearing without a single pictogram and in the frame 4 on um, frame sorry in the draw call should be 4 we can uh, see that only this uh, flag was rendered and frame debugger offers variety of statistics uh, i encourage you to uh, play with it see what it can tell you uh, we will focus on only on the most basic ones here you can see uh, the texture that is used to uh, create this uh, particular draw call. And I can see that it's simply the, the icon of the flag. So that means I forgot to po put this flag icon into my sprite atlas. And I can easily spot mistakes like that uh, using the frame debugger. But Putting everything in Sprite Atlas is not a solution to get everything drawn in a single draw call. Uh, here you can see a uh, debugging tool that we use uh, for our projects. And what's, what will be interesting to us is the bottom part, where you can see the uh, frame rate graph and uh, some performance statistics. This, uh, this view should be rendered in at most nine draw calls. But for some reason, it was rendering, it was spending, spending more draw calls uh, to render it. And I was wondering why. Well, instinctively, I uh, put, uh, I organized the hierarchy to reflect what I see on the screen. So. On the bottom, we have this uh, graph. 
Uh, above, there's a, a scroll view that contains some text, and uh, above it is the input field for uh, filtering the content of the scroll view. And what's important here is that the graph is uh, has a constant height and is always stuck to the bottom of the window. So its order in hierarchy doesn't matter. Whatever I put it, it will always be on the bottom of the screen. And I noticed that putting it higher than a scroll view uh, made it render faster. And why is that? Because when you, need to, when you have something with a mask and scroll view uh, masks the text that is inside, Unity needs to set a clip rect to a different, uh, different value to do, to do that. And if this uh, clip rect value differs from what was in the previous draw call, it will always force a new draw call. Even if you have everything in a single sprite atlas, if you will use uh, a mask and Unity will need to change the clip rect, it will give you an extra uh, wasteful draw call. And how Unity uh, decides when uh, it changes the clip rect? Well, it decides on the order of the in the hierarchy. So simply uh, trying to force Unity to draw non-masked objects first uh, did the trick for me and made this tool even more uh, performant. Another example. Uh, this is from the game uh, that was uh, that the table I showed you before was created, and in every view there was this bottom toolbar, and I noticed that it renders in five, six, sometimes seven draw calls, and uh, it de depended on the device resolution. And it was weird because it was only like a horizontal layout group few buttons, and yet I noticed that uh, it varied how many <coughs> draw calls would be needed to uh, add those uh, bottom parts of the buttons. And uh, there were no masks, everything was on the uh, same sprite atlas, I was really puzzled. And I know that as a speaker in this conference I should probably be able to provide answers but unfortunately, I'm, I still have no idea why it happened. But what is important, I was able to realize there is a problem in the, uh, using the frame debugger, so it's really helpful. And thanks to that, I was able to find a solution, even though I didn't know uh, what exactly was the problem. Uh, so it turned out that uh, simply putting a very minuscule spacing in the horizontal layout group made uh, it always render with using three draw calls. Since this was in every single uh, view in the game, I was able to significantly boost the frame rate on each screen of the game, only because of this small change. And that shows the importance of the frame debugger, because using a profiler or, a, or any other tool, you would only see, OK, I have some rendering problem in my scene. But you wouldn't be able to pinpoint what exactly is your problem. And you wouldn't be able to easily find the solution. Uh, another trip. Uh, trick I have for you is uh, also re related to draw calls and when you, whenever you leave this source image for your UI empty, Unity uses something, that texture uh, to render it called Unity White. Whenever Unity needs to change a texture, it produces a new draw call. So every time you have it like that, you create a wasteful draw call. But there's a solution. You can create a one by one single pixel graphic and put your put it in every single sprite atlas, so that when you want your uh, want to have an image that uh, 
is just a pure rectangle, you can still uh, force Unity to draw it all together with uh, all the rest of the UI. And that al also can boost uh, the performance. And like I showed you, sometimes finding a even small place to optimize your game makes the biggest difference. And I hope that uh, you learned something new, at least one thing, and I want you to remember that spending significant amount, amount of time just investigating how your project is rendered, how it works, is really worth the effort, because if you will find this small bottleneck in your project and you will fix it, you can turn it from like performing OK to a highly performing 60 FPS game. So thank you. And if you have any questions, I'm all yours. Go on. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm to go. Hey, um, I have question about gradients because mm -hmm. it was totally new for me. I'm UI designer, so I'm preparing those graphics. And does it work for more colorful uh, gradients too, or not? Only uh, for one color? Yes, if you will have uh, two uh, two colors, it will be uh, there will be gradient between the colors, but it won't work with three colored uh, gradients, and so. it won't work with three pixels. Like you will get a result, uh, but it will not be uh, this kind of smooth uh, gradient. You can experiment. Uh, you can create a three pixel gradient. Uh, like that in Unity and see how it will look and if it will satisfy you. And if it will, that's that's nice. Okay, and then we set up the file as a nine slice, right? Mm, uh, like no, slice? you can set up uh, the file you, you import just as a simple image because it's not nine slicing that does the work, it's just the stretching of the graphic. And when Unity scales the graphic, it applies uh, uh, filter that mm, smooths it out. Like if you have a pixel art and you will not disable the filtering, your pixel art will be blurry. And we use this effect here to uh, like force this blurriness and enlarge it, and it will always give us a perfect gradient. So if you want a whole gradient in your, in a gradient in your whole screen, like, uh, one full, full HD or 2K, that would be a really big graphic. But you can have it uh, appear really nice and smooth without any bending using only two pixels. OK, thank you. Sure. Uh, so with the example of changing colors on the, um, on the sprites, you, I, from what I understand, the limiting factor is the memory because if you do that, you increase the draw calls because every every uh, material that you change um, color is uh, just uh, one draw call for it. So the limiting factor and optimization was on the memory and reducing the amount of images, right? Yes, it will always be kind of a matter of balancing it out and what you actually want to optimize. If you have a project that uses uh, high quality, like big graphics, you may say that, okay, it's fine to sacrifice one draw call and reduce the build size uh, by few megabytes. Mm. Sure, thanks. I like w with the pr previous question, I encourage you to experiment and just check what is the best solution for you. Thanks. Um, 
Hello, I have a quick question in terms of canvases. Like, what is good recommendation from your side? Is to have one or more than one? That's a very interesting topic. Like, <laughs> I had to choose what to put in this uh, presentation, and like covering the entirety of UI would take a lot of time. But in canvases, you should always remember that uh, changing the rect transform dimensions causes the whole canvas to update and recalculate. So if you know that you will have some static stuff in your game that won't be animated or won't change the size, it's better to put it on a separate canvas because uh, you will save on uh, the layout recalculations. But again, it depends because uh, sometimes uh, it may be more beneficial to put it together with the mm, other stuff if your uh, structure of the hierarchy is not very complicated because uh, recalculating this layout may take less time than uh, additional draw call related to splitting the canvases. Thanks. Um, regarding this trick you found with adding some padding to your uh, to your UI and saving a few a uh, few draw calls, I was just curious. Uh, once you saw those weird draw calls and uh, uh, framed the debugger, were you just it was just weird for you and it was just by luck that you were starting to play around with the settings and just by pure chance you a few draw calls disappeared and you said, "Oh, this is it." No, it was um, like by. I get uh, those projects for the performance review quite often, and I kind of know what to expect. And when I saw this graphic, I see, okay, uh, it has this many elements. Uh, it, this, this one graphic is on a different uh, sprite atlas. Others is on the different sprite atlas. So I should totally get three draw calls. But I see that I have more draw calls than I expected. So I started investigating what is going on. And that's how I discovered this, uh, this issue. And I also tend to... Uh, right, but just mm -hmm. uh, experiencing this idea that actually it was adding just the padding. Well, do you have any uh, clues that it was that? Or it was just random chance that you changed change the padding and this is where the draw calls... Uh. Like, uh, I started to playing with the free uh, aspect uh, in the Unity uh, editor preview, and I noticed that well, it, when I change the width of the screen, it uh, changes the amount of uh, draw calls from between three to seven, five to seven, and well, I concluded, well, probably the horizontal layout group is to blame. So let's start splitting these elements. So I put like huge padding to see what will happen. And surprise, surprise, I had through three draw calls. Uh -oh. uh, so I figured out, OK, so I will make it smaller so no one will notice. And maybe this effect will uh, prevail. And it did. So like, you know, I could dig more and try to really get to the bottom of it, probably. but. It was a matter of time, right? I found the, the solution that was working, so I applied it. And I written into it in the review, and if the developers would like to uh, dwell deeper what, uh, what, ca what happened, they had the opportunity. I was just like the reviewer, and I put some points how they can improve the performance in the game. Cool, thanks. So I think that concludes the presentation. So thank you for attending, and good luck with UI. <laughs>